welcome in to game four of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our legendary friends over at Zappos. The Banana Band split, Bill Leroy and company are fired up to be back in Peoria, Arizona for the fourth battle between the Nanners and the Party Animals on this young tour. So far, it has been all boys in pink. The bad boys of Banana Land, 3-0, and looking to keep it going here in the Peoria Sports Complex. As we zoom in on the broadcast booth, we complete our final zoom. Welcome into the booth. Josh Tolevsky, Biko Scala, so happy to have you on this Thursday night. Boy, oh boy, the Bananas trying to break a 12-game losing streak against their arch nemesis. Goal, the MVP of the weekend, Brett Helton, the showman of the day on Saturday. Drake, Drake Toll caught up with him a couple days ago in Grayson. I'm here with Brett Helton, the showman of the night. Thanks a lot, by the way, Biko. Brett, smell party. P-A-R-T-Y, party, party, party. Brett, why are you a showman? You gotta dance, you gotta post. When you're out there, you're slinging the rock. The boys are behind you, you're entertaining. That's what happens if you want to see. Tampa was a lot of fun, yeah? It was as good as it gets. One of those big cities, great stadiums. The boys are buzzing, the fans are wild. Move fast, move fast, move fast. Brett, how do you stay so fast out there? <laughs> You just never gonna stop. The more you work, the more you go. It's just a hunt. I'm gonna say DJ. Fiesta! No, no! Back to you, Vico. And how about that camera work? Well, not at the end there, but the vast majority of it, tremendous. Clayton Pimp, Clayton Franklin's the best in the game of that sort of thing, man. Shout out to them for helping Drake. I try to take credit for one thing, and all right, that's that's not why we're here. It's time to turn the page and look at some of the storylines heading into this evening. And a big part of that sweep, it was the Party Animals' first five hitters. Hampton, Cornette, Skull, Fisher, and Thomas, they were terrific. Look, they propelled the Party Animals to nine straight wins to take 2023, and they did not stop in Tampa Bay in the first three games. You see Dalton Cornette, DC3, leading all banana ball players with seven hits through the opening series and Jake Skull a series for the ages as well seven runs scored three more than any other banana baller five hits four runs batted in also paced all players through the opening series and Noah Fisher with a heck of an opening series five hits Tanner Thomas three hits two of which were doubles and three runs batted in man this party animals order was deep at the top. Yeah, these five bad boys combined to hit 377. They were 23 for 61. Another brewing storyline to keep track of here, the trick play race. How about Dustin Baber keeping pace here with Ryan Cox? These guys were one and two last year with Cox edging out Babes. And we've got a zero in on last year as well. You see in games between the bananas and party animals only, 93 trick plays for Dustin Baber, 113. Cox had an edge by 20 trick plays. But when you see the average trick plays per game, not that much of a difference. And now you give both of these guys three games in an opening series. They are matching each other trick play for trick play. Nine from Baber, nine from Cox. And unfortunately, Baber the only one to come up with a trick play miss between the two of them. And that's a fact. And now let's get a gander at our starting pitcher matchup tonight as it will be Sean Fluke, the exterminator, Mr. Undeniable himself against Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Really a clash of styles here. It is quite the pitching matchup. And of course, this is what we saw in Cooperstown, New York to close out the tour with everything on the line. And Sean Fluke, as you can see, a 128 ERA plus, well above tour average. But for Kyle Lewis, just five percentage points below tour average. But Kyle let in innings pitched, let in strikeouts as well. Both of these guys regularly throw pretty quick innings and for Kyle he's trying to dominate with fastball slider meanwhile for Sean Fluke it's all off speed for him especially with that big 12-6 curve on three I need everyone here to yell start the clock one two three showtime showtime indeed for the party Jesse. Animals, number six full capacity crowd over 11,000 Bananiacs and Party Animals Faithful packed in here to the Peoria Sports Complex. 
This was the biggest game in Banana Ball history last April 1st. And the only other Banana Ball game played here in Peoria. This one chopped to Jackson Olsen, charging, throwing just in time. Excellent job by the great eight to get an out on the first pitch of the night. Yeah, that's a big first out from Jackson Olsen. Wasn't necessarily set up in the right spot there in the shift there against Hampton, but a good crossbody play and throw there. Thought about possibly going for a trick play, but Olsen knew it's much more imperative to get Kyle through the first and just get the first out in this ball game against last year's best hitter on tour. Back-to-back -back heaters from Kyle to start his night as that one's roped foul. Down the right field line, Trackman has had all three fastballs right on the dot, 90 miles an hour from Cowboy Kyle. And here's Dalton Cornett, started last year extremely hot, finished with superb numbers. He's red hot to begin this season as well. Seven for 14, hitting a clean 500 with a double. Yeah, and three straight games with multiple hits to start the 2024 tour. He actually only accomplished that feat once last season. So, man, he is off to the start that he would like. That one inside. Dangerous 3-1 pitch coming here to a guy who homered a year ago in the first inning here in Peoria. This one roped into right center in the batting average above 500. Cornette now 8 for 15 on this young season. He legitimately cannot be stopped. He can't be shifted against. And for Dalton Cornette, again, this is a batter who had success in Peoria last season as well, going deep against Christian Deerman. Not a threat to run, has not attempted to steal a base so far this year. And was 7 for 14 in his tries a tour ago. Now Jake Skull, who mentioned on the pregame show, he was the MVP across both sides in Tampa. Went 5 for 13, a home run, a double, and paced all hitters with seven runs scored. Tied for the tour lead with four driven in. And a big part of scoring seven runs for Jake Skull, the fact that he is also pacing all players with three stolen bases on the season. And a lot of those, he was stealing with two outs. A very aggressive approach from Skull. And he feels like he's really playing banana ball the right way at the moment. Former first round draft pick. Rangers grabbed him 15th overall in 2010. Seven years of minor league baseball. Four years of Power 5 football at UGA after that. This is his fourth world tour. And he evens the count at two and two as he watches the heater go low. And he's a tough batter again. The guy who led the entire tour in 2023 in ball four sprints. He's always going to work a tough plate appearance. As this one's grounded up the middle, Cox will field and shovel out of the glove to Gabe Howell. Manning second base thanks to the skull shift. And the Bananas will be able to get the lead runner in Cornette. Now two outs here for Kyle. Tenth trick play of the tour for Coxy. So he breaks the tie for the lead with Baber. As you look again, with the glove flip behind the back, it's a beauty. And Skull... Very speedy, back to the bag, standing on the pickoff attempt. And again, that's the right call by Kyle Lewis, doing an early check of Jake Skull, who was stealing often with two outs, and that's the exact scenario he finds himself in here with Noah Fisher now up to the plate. Peter right down Broadway, and he will check on Skull again. He once again is back without getting dirty. You got... It's a heck of a check by Fisher. I think the Bananas pitching staff, especially right-handers, think if they're going to solve this incredibly powerful cleanup man for the animals, they're going to have to execute breaking balls down and away. Yeah, and for Kyle Lewis, especially here against Noah Fisher, we've seen him hit so many fastballs and collect base hits off of them that he is trying to go off speed to Fisher here. Does, and it's Fisher roping this one into left field. Skull is getting the wave from Mike Bavasis, and Noah Fisher is able to succeed against the off-speed stuff from Kyle Lewigs and play to run for the party animals. Second extra base hit on the season for Fisher. Third run driven in. And the first inning troubles continue for Cowboy Kyle. Nearly escaped unscathed, but Fisher tags him, and the party animals up a run. I think for Kyle Lewis, he likely would have liked to have gotten that pitch a little more 
down to Noah Fisher, left it up, and he did not miss. So a little bit of a mistake there from Kyle. Another look at the swing by Fisher. Heck of a job keeping that puppy fair, one hopping the wall. And now Tanner Thomas gets a heater low. The left fielder, three for 10 across three games. Been hitting in the five spot in all four games now, and he's pacing the tour with his two doubles. And also pacing the tour this year in most pitches per plate appearance, average, averaging almost six, as Jackson Olsen will have this one hit his way, go under the legs, and the Bananas will get out of the inning with a trick play from the great eight. Trick plays from Cox and Olsen. You get another look at Jackson's right here. And after a couple looks at the under leg toss, sixth trick play of the tour for Jackson, let's get a look at the Party Animals defensive alignment. Left to right in the outfield, it is Thomas Hampton and Skoll. Third to first gives you Fisher, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Behind the dish is Dalton Cornett. And on the bump, it is Sean Fluke. Yeah, and Sean Fluke worked with Dalton Cornett in his first start of the season. They come back working again. It feels like Fluke really likes working with the same type of guys. And again, you got to look up the middle at Chase Acuff and Dustin Baber, the key guys who are going to be racking up the trick plays in this ballgame tonight in Peoria. Zoom in on Mr. Fluke on the bump with his one trick play a tour ago. And he throws slow, slow, and slower. Mid-80s with the fastball. It's pretty much the slowest heater we have in Banana Ball. In fact, it is. But with a devastating 12-6 curve, a slider, and a changeup to boot, he keeps everybody on their heels. And in his debut in 2024, Sean Fluke earned the win, throwing four and two-thirds credited innings pitched across five innings. Scattered eight hits, but only allowed two runs to the Bananas and two ball four sprints, still looking for his first strikeout. But Fluky averaged an inning in four minutes and 12 seconds in his debut. Here's the Nanners lineup. D.R. Meadows and Brandon Crosby due to swing it in the first. Dan Oberst, Eric Jones Jr., Howell, Cruz, Alexiades, Olsen, Leroy, and Cox will finish it up as Meadows stays red hot, dunks that one in front of his counterpart in center. And DR now seven for 12 on the tour. He is batting above 500. Yeah, and DR's been very happy with his start to the season. The Bananas weren't gonna bat him anywhere else except lead off against Sean Fluke as Meadows had a 350 clip against Fluky last season. Here's Brandon Crosby, takes the breaking ball outside. Meadows going to second, the throw in time. What a play by DC3. Aggressive base running by DR. He's requesting for a challenge. We'll see if the Bananas acquiesce to his demand. Another look right here. Boy, he thought he was never tagged. Lalo Mendoza with the call out there, umpiring his very first banana ball game, and that is an immense first out. The innings tying run off the bags. Yeah, and you saw so much emotion from DC3 behind home plate. Really emphatic and happy that he was able to throw DR Meadows out there. And we continue to see early on in banana ball games, the bananas and party animals not wanting to use their challenge too early as this one goes towards the seats and it will be ruled that it was not a catch by the fans. Looked like it was a bobble, might have been snagged afterwards, but not a clean catch originally, and that is necessary to record your out as Brandon Crosby takes a mighty hack and comes up empty on the Fluke off speed. That is Sean Fluke's first K of the year. He did not pick one up in his four and two third innings pitch last week in Tampa. And he was very aware of it, believe it or not, and surprisingly excited about it, just feeling so confident in his stuff but he was able to get guys out without recording Ks. As Dan, Dan Oberst goes after Fluke's first pitch and drops that one into left field. The Bananas trying to stage a two-out rally now. Dan Oberst, just like DR in the leadoff spot, now seven for 12. The best hitter that the Nanners had a year ago. Picking off the tour and picking up where he left off. There's that big bender, 12-6 curve. Trackman had it at 67 miles per hour. Gets the outside corner, EJ behind 0-1. Eric Jones Jr., of course, a guy 
who with one fell swoop could flip this inning in the banana's favor. That one almost identical to the first offering, and he's behind 0-2. And I think what makes Sean Fluke so tough is that for the Bananas, they're facing so many guys who are not even throwing at the speed of Sean Fluke that once you see a guy lollipopping curveballs less than 70 miles an hour, it is really tough to be that patient, sit back, and be able to find some success. He went with the changeup at 72, now goes to a slider while dropping down. Cornette eats it on the throw to first. We hope he's okay. Now he's laying down. Two Ks for Fluke. The party animals win the inning. And Vava picks up his catcher at the dish and is going to carry him all the way back to the dugout. So looks like Cornette is okay. Certainly getting the help there from Pavasis. And as Cowboy Kyle takes the mound, we can throw it down to him because the banana starting pitcher with the mic on him. How you living, Kyle? Field reporter, you never knew you needed. Correct. Here to report. Oh, and happy to be here. Kyle, how is the weather down there? It's. I mean, Arizona is fantastic. I mean, there's no humidity, and it's just. It's almost kind of cold. If I'm gonna be like honest with you guys. I haven't sweated at all. Like I've been trying to sweat, and I haven't dripped a drop. It was 67 at the game start, 64 degrees right now. We'd sign up for this all year. Good to be back in Peoria. You guys are down by a point. And soon, Sean Fluke will be joining the mic here. I'm sure you're not looking forward to that. Yeah, I probably won't be talking a whole lot because he's probably got a whole bunch of smack to talk. So He just recorded his strike career-high strikeout, I think. He matched last year's tour with two strikeouts. <laughs> Dad, Kyle, that's a pretty hot start for you, man. I hope Lukey was able to hear that. If he wasn't, I'll say it again. All right, Fluke, let's hear what you, let's hear what you got, buddy. We got, we're back. <laughs> I think I gotta be in there. I can't hear him. Huh? Cowboy, I know you hear me. What you want, Fluke? <laughs> Oh, that's a good pitch. Good spit by Delano. Though. Why does everybody swing at your curveballs, but nobody swings at mine? You gotta throw it lower than 55 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little, oh, Garrett's got a bum ankle. Oh, dude, he's sparring. I don't know what he's doing. I wanted a quick pitch so bad. <laughs> Picking on the injury, Kyle. I see you. Yeah, he's got a bum ankle. Uh, also, a hot start. You gotta do whatever it takes, you know. I need to throw as hard as you anyway. Let's <laughs> throw it. Hey, I, I know I, you probably don't know this stat, but I just want to let you know it's been like 170 days since the Bananas have won a game. It's been, it feels like three or four it's lifetimes. Almost half a year. <laughs> almost half a year. Talking to Kyle right now? Yeah, we are talking to Kyle. He's starting to concentrate. Uh, hey, are we uh, sticking with the heater first pitch pattern or uh, what for this next AB? Let me know. Let me a heater or you're scared. Oh. Swing the bat. That was a spike job. That thing went 45 feet. <laughs> that was your specialty right there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. What do you think of that? Is that a strike or what? You got me, Fluke. Oh, all right. Hey, you're still one behind. Oh, man. Those hips haven't been what swung like that. that? Oh, you like those God. hips? I got to stop watching. <laughs> Holy jeez. I have to stand on that mound after this. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you throw uh, first base side or third base side? What was that? Do you throw first base side or third base side? Uh, first base. Yeah, we're just digging a crater over here. <laughs> I'm a big boy, dude. I'm a big boy. Now Chase Acuff. Hey, I think you gotta, you're supposed to hit the catcher in the glove. <laughs> All right, let's slow it down. I need to take a break there anyway. The Kyle, perfect the timing. Kyle, oh, you're gonna do it on the first pitch? Okay, there you go. Good. Yeah, I'm already behind one and oh, that's not a great start. <laughs> A-cuff battles, too. Oh, A-cuff, get down. Oh, doctor. Uh-huh. He wanted a trick play. I thought he was going to. A-cuff donut batter is pretty tough. Oh, yeah. He, he strikes can't... out like once a year. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's confounding, <laughs> really. Who we got? Mr. Quads coming to the oh, plate? Mr. Quads. <laughs> Let's see what he's got here. Oh. I'm so happy I don't have to be over there doing this. I look awful doing this things. Fluke, I bet you five bucks I strike him out. All right, I like it. You take me up on that? I like it. Air uh -huh. shake? Air shake, there it is. 
Well, it's first pitch here. I want to be in your head. All right, that didn't work out very well. Uh, what's coming, dude? I want to know. That's a spot. Right what do you got? There. What do you got here? Good, good. Oh, shoot. Oh, sorry. oh, Tosh Porter, it's foul. <laughs> hey, it's foul. it don't matter, baby. That's how I live right there. <laughs> 101 miles per hour off the bat, according to Trackman. I probably had two of those last night. Because I threw it 101. Hi, Chad. Yeah, fastball. Uh, look at that. Same page. Get it up there. Good, good. A little vlog grind? Have you? When's the last time you vlog grind? Oh, right dude, I've it like 87% every time. Oh my goodness. Get down, ball. Or actually, go, ball. What am I saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh! Wow! Superman. A little sketch. Oh, I got a pitch now. Oh. What right. oh, what oh, Anana fly out to the track. How, how am I supposed to do this with all this stuff on? I feel like. I feel like they, they give the bananas the good headset and the good mic, so like they get the AirPods and stuff, and I'm over here wired up like I'm from 1990. Like, oh yeah, good luck, Fluke. Go pitch with the freaking wires wrapped around your head. Right, too. I look at my, my pants are falling down. This is ridiculous. This is a back to back weekends that we've mic'd you up to. Is, I know. is this a. Far worse setup oh. than last week. What did we do oh, to you? I mean, it's in and out. I can hear you better than last time. That's for sure. Terrific. Oh, we got to crow hop a couple. We got to get this thing back going. Hey, Where's Kyle. It? By the way, that was a great inning by you, buddy. Oh. I don't know where he went. I don't know. He's probably a little upset. They're losing. Oh. All right. I only have so many more. Let's go. Get this show on the road. Fluky, three straight rookies: Howell, Cruz, and Alexiades. Oh God. What's that like? Andy Paul, MVP, some of that. They're rookies, like you said, you know, that's how you look at it. Correct. <laughs> Only a combined about 72 home runs in the Pioneer League last oh, year. Dude, that's something you definitely could have kept to yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I went to the lane. <laughs> what was that? Kyle, where are you, in the locker room? No, he's right there on the end. There he is, oh, I see him. Oh, I didn't get anything to drink that inning. I got caught in this. Oh. Dehydrated fluky. Oh, God. I a little drunk on that one. Maybe uh, what? Three uh, on the hot track? Uh, oh, no. Trackman had it at 79. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, uh -oh. oh, my God, it's gone. Oh, it's not gone. Yes. Yes, it's not gone. Oh, oh my God, that was smoked. <laughs> I think this might be like the record for most exit videos over 100 in the first two innings. You know, I think you just missed the barrel of his bat. That was 88 off the bat. Dude, I've been throwing literally meatball cutters in there, just praying it takes five seconds to get to the glove. I think my favorite thing in that entire series was kind of everybody with their hands up in the air as soon oh, as Tanner a, came down with that That, that was catch. probably 65 change up right down the middle. 71. Oh, yeah, oh, that's not bad. Dirty deuce. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Oh, I thought he was going to call a strike. That would have been generous. Fastball, a little subby here. Oh, yeah, you can't hit that. Oh, come on, Rack. Dude, strike zone is at his head. I love it. <laughs> what should we do, DC? Come on. Oh, yeah, let DC knows. I'm probably going to throw it down the middle, though. Oh, get it up, Fluke. That one was bad. Oh, almost made a good catch. That's about all I got right there tonight, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. You touched 82, Fluke. <laughs> Feels good. Change up. All right, in the dirt. DC's being that guy. Right? Oh, oh my God! That, <laughs> that thing moved a mile. <laughs> oh, man. Kyle, feel free to run me out of water or something. Shake, shake. Change up in the dirt again. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, he just said, aggressive spits by Rackley. <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> he was angry. I got some Reginate if you can get him out here. Strike out. No, strike out. High chair, Derek. Oh, oh, DC, you better do something cool. You better do something. Oh. 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 I'm the bobble. I'm the bobble. It's all right. Hey, well, I got you guys. What, are, what am I sitting at with fastball? You are consistently 89 to 91, Kyle. Okay. I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, the Tampa mound was so much more downhill than oh, this mound is. It's yeah. beautiful. Kind of feel like count. I'm throwing back good. to Grayson. 2-2. 2-2, Fluke Gate. Yeah, we're going high set again. This guy with the high oh. cheese. The side cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah
Back to Tanner. Really? What's he doing? Oh, he wanted, beep, he wanted the trick play. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Look, you gonna get a strikeout here? You wanna double down? Yeah, I feel like I got this guy's number. You wanna, you wanna, <laughs> you wanna double down on our bet? All right, it'll double down. Okay, I didn't I'm get five, I'll you five right now, so. Um, Subby slot, uh, let's see, DC basically Baba. I don't think you ever made it to the Pioneer League, yeah. but this guy was the MVP. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Dude. Just, they never seen something this slow. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I did. Look, it's, he just capped that as a pull shot. No. <laughs> what? What well, is this sidearm nonsense? It's the only way to the right. I can't get it to the right. I might try Peter, that. Here we go. Oh, 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 there's a big gust of wind right there. Oh, man. Nah, oh, right I'm a barrier deuce. It's DC. Throw the dirt. Ah, damn. <laughs> God, one of the strikeouts. Hey, those are two, one, two, three innings. Good yeah. job, buddy. You better get on the horse, buddy. It's about to be 171 days since you guys won. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Cooperstown all over again. Baby. <laughs> Sean Blue, Kyle Lewis, thank you, guys. Love you, buddy. Love you, too. Have fun, boys. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, we're fucking grooving wow. right now. Six up, six down for the starting pitchers while they were chirping each other. Now Maceo and the fellas will dance us to the third frame. Kai Mitchell, Christian Deerman, Ryan Kellogg, and Noah Bridges. How about that? That's a heck of a dance troupe out there. And a heck of an inning there between Kyle and Fluke. Very efficient, the pair of them. Uh, by the way, I just, before we dive into the MPs, I just want to say that player dance is like the Ocean's Eleven cast of player dances for the Bananas. And yes, a very efficient inning for both Kyle and Fluke. Kyle clocked in a three minute and 15 second inning and for Fluke, three minutes and 35 seconds. Good work. Now the pride of Duval County, Jason Swan gives the fans a chance. It clings down in the concourse. So a 1-1 count on the Animals first baseman. It's gonna be nine, 10, and one. Faber and Hampton do to swing it after Swanee. And a great offering there by Kyle. Inside corner, he's back ahead in the count. Yeah, and Swanee came close to fouling out to a fan for the second time. And now Kyle Lewigs is not looking for his second fan out against Jason Swan on the tour. He is looking for the strikeout as he is getting the K-clap going here in Peoria Sports Complex. He's one behind Fluke. Okay on the evening for Kyle, two for the exterminator. Now the count even at two and two on Swanee, and Kyle wants the clap to start again. The Peoria crowd, it's Thursday night. It's a week night, they're not quite ready to get back to clapping, and now the count has run full. Take the dust up. Pay off to the five-year man out of Georgia Southern. Back up the middle, and on a hop in front of Meadows. Swan's third hit in 12's trip, 12 trips to the dish so far on the tour. And for Swanee, they've been pretty consistent hits in terms of his spray chart. All three hits now going up to center field. So we'll see if the Bananas possibly try and place some shifts on him as this game progresses. This is where the party animals lineup is so tough. Here's Dustin Baber in the 10 hole. He's only one for 11 across the first three games of this season. Bill Leroy calls the strike. Vincent Chapman does not. Vincent, I'm guessing, will argue that that one was high. Trackman had it in the zone, but it does not adjust up and low. 
And now, try and get back into the count. Cowboy Kyle brings in Olsen, Cox, and Meadows for a choreographed dance to one of Beyonce's newest tracks. Queen Bee going country. Makes sense for the man out of Richmond Hill, Georgia. Born in Texas, a cowboy himself. And Luig fires low. 2-0 on the man out of Babson Park, Florida. Feels like that song was recorded just for Cowboy Kyle to dance to a 3-2-2 of it. Feels right. That one's got the zone. There goes Swan. Throw from Leroy is into center field. Jason's going to turn around, go back to second. Meadows actually mishandled the ball, so if Swan went with his original decision, he would have had third base easily. For now, he'll be content with one stolen base. And you hope that Jason Swan is okay. Nobody's gone out to check on him, but it looked like he was hopping around and favoring one of his legs there at second base coming up, and that's the reason he didn't decide to advance. As now, ball four is issued, the sprint ensues, and here comes Swanee. He will jog into home plate to score, and Baber will hold it first, just a one-base sprint. Baber's first sprint of the season, his second run driven in. And the party animals, after winning the first inning, now lead here in the second. will dance their way back to the third base dugout. And joining in on the groove, to the top of the order we go, Reese Hampton. The first pitch of the ball game, grounded out to second base. And it was a good start for Cowboy Kyle. Reese batted close to 500 against Kyle last season. So to go one pitch and a ground out to second base, it's the kind of start you like to see. There goes Baber, that ball driven out to right center. Reese is watching it fly as it one hops out of the ballpark. Round roll double, unfortunate bounce for the party animals. As Baber will be turned back around. In fact, actually, it is Jordan Hussein, the automatic runner tonight for the animals. He can pinch run one time every trip through the order. And of course, Baber in the 10 hole means Hussein can pinch run again this time through. This is his banana ball debut. Is he's still recovering from a broken hamate bone in his right hand. This one out to left. Cruz backpedaling. Hussein tagging and can score easily. Hampton is trying to get to third. And he does. Aggressive base running. But he makes it the 90 feet. And the party animals now with two runs in the second as you get another look here at the play at third. And you know Jordan Hussein would have liked to be starting in the lineup for the party animals already this season, but excited just to get into the game to pinch run. And he said he was, we could expect two runs scored and two stolen bases from him tonight. There's his first run scored. Now it's Jake Skull, which got a fielder's choice, scored the run that won the first inning for the animals. One, ooh. Generous call by Vincent Chapman around the bottom of the knees. Good frame by Leroy. Count now two and one on the animal's right fielder. Chop to Crosby. Hampton stays put at third. And a dance move from Showtime to record a huge second out. And that was a heck of a split from Brandon Crosby at first base going to the bag. Are you kidding me? What a play, Simona! <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you like that? I like that a lot. Not a trick play, but a tricky one. And now a specialty walk up for Noah Fisher, his second of the year. Embodying the skater boy, tricks on top of the animal's dugout. Now he's on top of his board in the box and fouls this one off. It is not caught by a fan. And 
he pokes that one through the right side. He's not just a skater boy, he's a ball player. The throw from Alexiades towards first ends up clanging off the banana's dugout wall. It's an RBI single for Noah Fisher Well, he was on a skateboard. Can you believe that? Noah Fisher, even after the first pitch, doesn't decide to get off the board, gets in with the RBI single. That is an unbelievable at-bat for the banana ball rookie. It is one of the wilder things I've ever seen in a banana ball game. That is not going to be just a phase for him, Mom. <laughs> this one's lined off the bat of Tanner Thomas. Reese cleans it up. Trackman had it at 99 miles an hour off of Mr. Tinder's bat. Party animals push three runs across, and they are in prime position to double their lead in points tonight. Let's get it down to Jesse Cole for the first ever Grandma Argue Call Contest. So tonight, we're gonna have a little contest on see who can argue the calls the best. But we've got three grandmas who are gonna test it out. And fans, you're gonna be the judge of who did it best. Vincent, you ready for this? I guess so. All right, now this is a terrible call. Come on out here, 71 year old Patty B. Come on out here. Let's see what she. Oh, she looks upset. She looks like she means business. What are you doing? This is not for fun. This is a game. Get your act together for crying out loud. All right, what do we say, Patty B? She's still upset. All right. You don't want a grandma upset with you. All right, next. Please welcome another Patty, 72 years old, Patty R. Come on out, Patty R. Oh, here she comes. She doesn't look, she kind of looks happy. This is weird. What the heck was that? Did you go to umpire school? I hear you're from Texas. Don't they have umpire school in Texas? You have got to go to school, take a bath, and get a shave. Go to school? Take a bath and get a shave. All right. And now finally our last one. Let's hear it for 64-year-old Kelly. Come on out here. Uh-oh. Oh, she's already upset. Look at that march. Good luck, Vincent. She looks kind of angry. Let's go. Kelly? All right, she goes back to the shave. So was it, come out here, was it Patty R? Patty, come on out here. Was it Patty B? Was it Kelly? Or was it Patty R? All right, our winner in the grandma contest. Here we go. Well, as we love to say in Banana Ball, not every promotion is a home run. There's no need to give Vincent so much gruff for his beard. Yeah, as a man with facial hair myself, it just yeah, it feels wrong. This one up the middle to Acuff, the shortstop on the first base side of second with the dribble, second trick play of the night, and just in time to grab Mr. Olsen at first. Had the trick play to end the second inning for the party animals, now has the trick play to start the third for the animals as well. It's a great start for Chase Acuff here in Peoria. Just to finish up there on Vincent Chapman, he gets nothing but gruff from both sides all night. He's got the toughest job in banana ball. He only hears it when folks think they have been wronged. And now he gets three extra verbal lashings. <laughs> Seems uncalled for. I heard tomorrow in the, the script it is the Vincent Chapman grandma compliment off. It better be. It needs to be a balance here. How about the floaters coming out of the hand of Sean Fluke? He, had never, in what is now a three-year banana ball career, had never really been dropping down. And even in Tampa, we didn't see this. But here in Peoria, his second start of the year, 
He has added another level of craftiness as Dustin Baber, 360 between the legs, 10th trick play of the season. It's becoming one of his signature party animals trick plays. Dustin Baber, or Air Baber as we like to call this one, goes in the air 360. That is, oh, a phenomenal trick play. Retires the seven-year banana. And now Ryan Cox in his third world tour in the 10 hole. He's going to try and break a streak here of what is currently six straight bananas retired by Fluke. And he will do just that. Back up the middle. Base knock. He's now two for 10 on this young tour. Look, he's a tough batter, and it's really tough to get him to strike out Cox. He's just trying to get bat on ball there. Didn't do, mu didn't do too much at the plate there. Stuck out the bat, got it up the middle, and the party animals playing just straight up on Ryan Cox. is a tough guy to shift against. Just like we explained with Jordan Hussein in the top of this inning, Malachi Mitchell, the automatic runner for the Nanners, will pinch run because... It was for the 10-hole man, so now he can do it again. Wow, he takes off for second. Cornette's throw, not in time. And Mitchell going for third. Hampton's throw there, also not in time. Flash the kid, swipe second, gets to third on the E2. I was surprised he left because really DR Meadows is the guy who has to get on before the Bananas can dream about tying this third inning. Yeah, it was very aggressive from from Flash the Kid, but trying to just get one run across the board and hopefully jumpstart some kind of rally here for the Bananas. And man, I feel like if Reese Hampton had just let himself set up a little bit more before delivering that throw to third base, he might have had a chance to nail Flash the Kid. DR singled up the middle his first time. Dancing in the box, 3-0 pitch gets the zone. Malachi led last year's tour, 72 steals in 78 attempts. He's now tied for the lead this year with Jake Skoll as DR Meadows blasts it deep out to left, and it's going to roll to the wall. The doctor digging for three, head first slide, he's in there. A run home, Meadows fired up. And now the Bananas do bring the tying run in the third up to the dish. And that's the kind of rally you like to see from the Bananas. Tyler Killam gives him the tap on the helmet there. A huge blast from DR Meadows, who also benefited from the sprint defense the party animals were starting to show. With Luke down 3-1 against DR, the animals were ready for a possible shift. And that's why he was able to blast it all the way over the head of Tanner Thomas. Trackman had that as 91 miles an hour off the bat. This one shanked to the right side. Swan grabs it. He's racing Crosby to the bag, and he beats him there. Couple head first slides, an MJ move to boot, and the Animals win the third inning 3-1. to one. They lead two points to nothing. And that was a wildly athletic play from Jason Swan. Instantly recognized the race to the bag. Replay shows that Bryson Wheeler's call on the field was correct. Swanee with a little showtime move himself. And the Animals up 2-0, three innings in the books. And the Banana Band blasting away. As we head to the fourth. And Cowboy Kyle Lewix already off the bump, so he only goes three innings tonight after pitching four last week and now Noah Nisnik out for his second career banana ball appearance he was superb in the first yeah Noah Nisnik threw three innings in his banana ball debut and out of all the bananas pitchers who debuted in Tampa Florida he by far had the most impressive debut just two hits and an earned run allowed one sprint but collected three strikeouts in his average MPI time Three minutes and 39 seconds. It was the best average MPI of any Bananas pitcher throwing more than one inning during opening weekend. And hey, one of the things that he impressed with in his debut, a 16-second strikeout on the mound. The Southpaw out of St. Louis, Missouri. Spent all five years of his collegiate career at Southeast Missouri State. In the OVC. And now Garrett Delano showing bunt. Peter right behind his Tukas. 
And just in time for the start of the inning, Brandon Crosby jogging out with the mic on him. Brandon, do you have us in your ears? Can y'all hear me? I don't think I have a mic. Oh, we've got you loud and clear. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> It was like a whole thing. We were trying to get the mic on, so cool. What's going on, y'all? That was an awful quick turnaround after a head first dive into first base. Yeah, I thought I almost got it, y'all. I thought I, thought I almost got it. Well, you did, and Swanee <laughs> just got you by a hair. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Trick play, fifth of the year for your Showtime. Let's go, let's go. Showtime, that is perfect banana ball feel, and it sets up a question I've been dying to ask you, man. You had back-to-back -back starts at first base to end Tampa with two trick plays apiece. You've already got five on the tour, man. How good are you feeling defensively right now? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling loose, you know. It's fun, so it just, like, it just happens, you know. Now Chase Acuff. Let's go, baby. Behind the and one. Talk to us about playing first base, because you've played all over in your life, but primarily, as of late, you were a second baseman. Yeah, this is a little different, but I played first base with Ogden for, like, a week, so... I kind of got a little feel about it, you know? But uh, the guys here, they really helped me out. Show me the rope, so it makes it a lot easier. Oh, 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 come on, somebody catch that. That one skied come towards on. the fans. They got it, did they get it? Oh, no. No dice. Now, Brandon, what was going through your head when you get a shot hit to you at first base? You go to the bag, and instead of just tapping the foot on the back, you go full split out there. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, we all know it's showtime, baby. And right now, I'm Michael Jackson. So, you know, I had to hit the split. You know, I don't think Michael Jackson had a split, but he did it today. 2-2 <laughs> two -two to A-Cuff is fouled at Come the dish. We'll do it again. Now, we talked about it for the K-Club back in the final scrimmage, but... For the rest of the world who now gets to hear you for the first time, talk us through the whole Michael Jackson persona and how it kind of came about naturally at the Daytona tryout. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I grew up watching Michael Jackson, like the Jackson 5. Uh, my parents. Let's go! That's what it's all about right there is we got another look at the Nisnik bender to get the strikeout. A Cup's first K of the year and free donuts for the full, full capacity crowd here in Peoria. Uh -oh. Have you picked up any dance moves from Vincent Chapman? Yes, I have. Brandon, do you think you can give us your best Vincent Chapman impression right now? Oh, look at those hips! Oh. Mike Pack went flying. You were shaking the tuchus so hard. You still got us? He lost it. Brandon, thank you so much for getting mic'd up. He loses us because... He starts twerking, Vincent-esque, and the mic pack goes flying. Makes sense. Foul ball, once again, not caught by the fans. Taj Porter, a switch hitter, turns around to hit righty here in his second trip to the dish tonight. He flew out deep to right. It's probably about five feet away from his first career banana ball home run. Wow! Called strike three there. That will end the frame. Porter so about faces and heads to the dugout. I have a sneaky suspicion a little surprised by the call. Just because it crossed Bill up. The track man liked it. Good, that right, Shark. I need good job there by Vincent to here in in the make the correct call, which is tough on those when... The catcher sets up on one side of the zone and it ends up towards the other side. And again, we saw Nisnik, the average MPI in that first appearance, three minutes and 39 seconds. This one completely on par with his opening performance here tonight. Three minutes and 26 seconds in the fourth for Nisnik.
One, two, three for Ame. A trick play by our mic'd up man, Showtime Brandon Crosby. And then back to back strikeouts. One swinging, one looking. Really impressive to get the K on A cup there when we had Kyle and Fluke mic'd up. Talked about how this guy is so tough to K. Was the hardest man to strike out in 2018 in all of Division II baseball and had more sprints than K's a year ago on his first world tour. Biko, I'm going to give us each a sheet of paper after this game, and we will we will write a written apology to Shark for our actions tonight, thinking that he was crazy. He was out of his mind. I thought it was absurd. But somehow, Shark knew. Shark knew that. Shark knows all. Nasty Niz was going to break off an insane bender and evade a swing there from Acuff. And you get to look at Deeb Cox. That's Ray Ortega with the cape down there. He's fitting in perfectly in his first campaign in Banana Land. Stole him from the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs of the Atlantic League. Now it's going to be the meat of the order for the Nanners, who need a run desperately. Losers of three straight to start this tour, 12 straight when you go back to the end of 2023. Oberst lined one to left center his first time. Just like Fluke on the mound out of the St. Petersburg area. Dan from Largo, Florida, at least as of when he was eight years old, Long Island, New York before that. But the formative years... Well spent down in the Sunshine State. Cranks this one on a couple hops. Noah Fisher between the legs across the diamond. And it is trick play number two for Fish. Yeah, and Fish was set up in a pretty perfect spot overall. Struggled in the trick play department a little bit during the scrimmages we saw in spring training. But here, didn't try to do too much. Just went between the legs. And what's really fascinating... It's the fifth matchup of the season between Sean Fluke and Dan Oberst, and that is the first time Sean Fluke has gotten Dan out. It is fascinating. Dan was three for three, combining his base knock tonight. He's now four for five. Off of Sean Fluke. Son of a gun. That ball blasted deep out to right. And Skull there to put it away. EJ retired. And Gabe Howell flew out deep to left his first time. Flirted with his first banana ball home run. Got the numbers. Had 17 long balls in the Pioneer League last summer. And now Fluke throwing away the glove. He's feeling it. Well, Howell homered in back-to-back -back scrimmages for the Bananas before this season got underway. And for him, already nine fly ball outs on the season. It just feels like he's getting under the ball just a touch. He is really close to running into one and hopefully taking off offensively from there for the Bananas. Dangerous pitch coming here from Fluke behind three balls, no strikes. And Howell, green light, got a center cut heater, swung through it. Well, look, you've got no one on base, two outs, and you see a pitch like that coming right in the middle of the zone. Why wouldn't you swing? And now the next pitch from Sean Fluke, ball four, and you've got Howell off the races, thinks about trying to go for two bases, but he'll pump the brakes and stay at first, and the Bananas will try and see if Robert Anthony Cruz, rack, can come up with a big walk-off, which would be his second of the tour. Gabe's first sprint of the season. Guy who was 30 for 41 in his stolen base attempts for the Glacier Range Riders last year. And Robert Anthony Cruz behind 0-1. He also flew out to left his first time. That one stroked over the leap of Baber into right. Howell's going to slam the brakes, throw behind him the tag. In time! Laser beam from Skull. He gets an aggressive Gabe Howell, and that will end the frame.
And this might be where we see a challenge for the Bananas or the fans. We will see the fans trying to urge whoever's got the confetti to pop it, but we will go to the replay. Okay, so we get the challenge. Did it come from the fans? I think it had to have. I do not see any of the challenges that were deployed from the party animals or the bananas on the field. Okay, so we get on the Riedel headsets. Vincent Chapman, Zach Frangelo, ready to hear it. We look, the first play didn't prove anything. We're going to need to see a center field angle. We'll need that center field shot. I don't know if this is going to give it to us. That tells us nothing as yeah, well. Can't tell. Center field didn't have it. So after, okay, one more look. Here, no, once again. I think the ruling is inconclusive, guys. Yep. Call will stand. Correct. Not enough evidence. Thank you. Bang, bang. Lalo Mendoza out there to make the call. He is perfect in his young banana ball umpiring career now, one for one. Defending his honor. Here comes Jolie Shabala for our Bananas Foster family of the night. There are 400,000 children and teens in foster care. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. Our organization is dedicated to celebrating those who are making a difference in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight we are celebrating the Chittister family. This family has been a licensed foster family since 2019 and have welcomed 26 children and teens into their home. Fans, please help us celebrate the Chittister family for all that they do in the foster care community. Always one of the most special moments in Banana Land when you get the big Bananas Foster Ladies family. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time hug. for our Bananas Foster family. Tonight. tonight, the Chichester family. They licensed foster parents since 2019. They've welcomed 26 children and teens into their home and have adopted two into the family. It's Phenomenal! It's it's seriously so cool. And what also just stands out is, regardless of where we go, the ovation and the noise that you get from these crowds is always the same. People with so much appreciation for these people. You get a look at the headbanded nasty Noah Nisnik out on the bump. And a one, two, three frame in the fourth. His first of relief. Ground out in a couple Ks, and now he's got 9, 10, and 1. Swan Baber, and then at the top of the lineup, Hampton due to swing it. Yeah, you would think it might be an easy part of the order here for Nisnik, but he's got to face three consecutive righties, and, well, you include Reese Hampton in that because he is a switch hitter. Swan with a single up the middle. Stole the base, came around to score in the three-run top of the third. It was all kicked off by the Animals' first baseman. On a smidge down. 2-0 now from Niz. Make it 3-0. J. 
Jason taking all the way. Still in the hitter's count. Fouls it straight back. Nisnik has run it full. And look, Nisnik had a pretty impressive strikeout to walk ratio throughout his college career. He's shown it early on. And how about this? We'll battle back all the way from down 3-0 against Jason Swan and get the strikeout looking. Three straight Ks for Niz Nasty. That is one for Swanee where he will go back and watch the video and be very upset. That one a couple inches inside. Good frame by Leroy. Swan's first K of the year really should have been his second ball for a sprint. Well, you're going to get those strikeouts sometimes for Jason Swan, mainly because he's a very patient batter, was second on the party animals in ball four sprint percentage, drawing them 14.1% of the time. It's that big bender, the curveball, 69 miles an hour on track, man. Part of a three-pitch mix. It's just the curve, a circle changeup, and a four-seam fastball for Nisnik as this one in foul territory. Leroy and Crosby, and Crosby with a basket catch. Ends up on his keister. It has a banana ball. Two away now. Some call him Showtime, but I heard in his formidable years, Brandon Crosby was, or formative years, Brandon Crosby was known as Brandon Basket Catch. <laughs> I've heard that. The T-ball days. Yeah, that was in between show choir and now. It's a long winding road. Well, he was Brandon Baritone in show choir. That's right, that's right. Here is Reese hitting from the right side, fouls this one, right side of the field, long run. Jackson Olsen was the only man who could have ever possibly gotten there, and even he didn't have a chance. So a 1-1 count on Reese Lightning, who Tonight is one for two with a double. Both at bats are from the left side. Two one coming to the former Tigers and Diamondbacks minor leaguer. Make it three and one. And of course, we shouldn't forget about Reese's performance in Peoria last season for the Party Animals. Had a home run, collected a sprint, and two runs batted in with a trick play as well. He was the showman of the night here last year. Another payoff pitch. Bounced up the middle. Sliding stop. Olsen to his feet. Just in time to get Hampton. The great eight with a great play, and it's six up, six down for Nasty Niz. It wasn't necessarily the greatest reaction time there for Jackson Olsen, but was able to get up the middle, make a great sliding stop, get up to his feet, and make a strong throw on to Showtime. And this nasty is impressing early on in this, in this uh, appearance.
cold strike on Reese Alexianis after the first ever pitch in a box. I heard when we're back in Mesa, they will be reprising the performance with, I'm on a mound. <laughs> it's good. Be a nice little Weird Al version of a Lonely Island banger. This one a mile high. Reese Alexiades. Wow, how about the job there by Chase Acuff. I don't know if Hampton ever found it, but his shortstop did. Ran about a country mile. It comes up with the catch just in front of his center fielder. And that might have been why Chase Acuff wound up with that ball in the glove right there. You did kind of see Reese Hampton with outstretched arms. Gives you the impression that he did not see the ball. Lost it in the sky here is Jackson Olsen is channeling his inner Taylor Swift, Michael Deeb playing the role of Travis Kelsey here. I mean, it is really something that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have chosen a banana ball game to be their first public appearance together since the Super Bowl. It's unbelievable. Karma is the walk if you see it a banana ball game. And Olsen ahead 1-0. Oh. Taylor. Sorry. Taylor ahead 0-1. Oh Pops it foul. Boy, this would be an unfortunate end. No, it's a ricochet off the roof. So ineligible to be caught by a fan after the deflection. And that bat here for Swifties around the world. Devastating changeup. And this one tapped past Luke. Acuff attacking, bare hit behind the back. It's an errant throw. So it'll be a trick play missed for Chase. Now Swan applies the tag, Jackson out. Bryson Wheeler saying he made an attempt at second base. And Taylor Swift, I beg your pardon, is going to be out on a bizarre one. The Bananas find themselves in the tortured base runners department. They're on fire tonight. Zing! The teardrops on Jackson's guitar after that base running blunder. He will never, never be able to get over that base running mistake. <laughs> I like that one. Hopefully he doesn't have bad blood with the party. <laughs> oh, man, I thought I had the final say there. That was good. Skull makes the call and will make the catch down to his knees, worming it out. A one, two, three inning for Fluke. In bizarre fashion, but he gets the job done. And he has tossed five scoreless now tonight. Skull three for three on his trick plays. And the worm is becoming that signature move for Jake Skull as well. Boy, he's got to be enjoying that. All right, we'll try and figure out how to officially score that Taylor Swift ground out. And while we do that, the young professor has four contestants who are going to dance in the Sharp. dark. Hit that music. Let's go. Oh, wow. It's getting weird. It's getting good. We are down to three. Three remain. Oh, my goodness. We're down to two. We are down to two. Oh my goodness. There are only two guys left. I've got Steven, I've got Randy, I don't know who to pick. I need more, I need more. I can't pick. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Steven, take off the blindfold, take off the blindfold. It's been just you out here for a little bit, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your winner, Dancing the Dark, it's Steven! There is your Dancing in the Dark winner. It looks like a long lost relative of Jack Black. 
Warms the heart to see a thousand likes on the stream. Thank you so much to everybody joining us in virtual Banana Land here on Thirsty Thursday. This one chopped foul. Noah Nisnik out for his third inning of relief. A tough spot in the order, two, three, four, Cornette, Skull, and Fisher. There's that big looping curveball. Trackman had that one at 67 miles an hour. Gives it again, this one off the end of the bat, coming in, Reese Alexi on his diving attempt. No diving catch. Bryson Wheeler saying that it hit the ground. Alexi Otis, apoplectic that that is the call. And, and now we have a fan okay. challenge. So some team used the challenge in our previous play. The fans pop the confetti, and we will pop on the headsets and take a look at this one. Zach Frangelo scrambling to get a headset on himself and Vincent Chapman. And we'll take another look. The Bananas are out of their challenge. They lost theirs on the Gabe Howell attempt. And here we go. That's an out. That's a clean catch. That's that's there, a catch. That's the a catch. call is overturned. Overturned. That's a catch. You can see it. Pure perplexion on the face of Alexiades. And Bryson Wheeler finally has a call overturned. He had a sterling reputation up until now. He's proved he's human. He can no longer be Bryson the Machine Wheeler anymore. He actually had me promise before the game that I would not overturn any of his calls. And I, I looked at him and said, me no make no promises. <laughs> good English and a good decision by you. That would have put us in quite a pickle there on one we clearly had to overturn. There's a gnarly bender, grazes the outside corner. Now one and one on Jake's goal as he has to limbo a bit out of the way. He gets out of the box and now Vincent Chapman telling him he wasn't allowed to get, a, get out of the box. Skoll thought that Vincent was letting him out since he lost his balance. And Vincent ends up agreeing. And now the count's one and two anyway. A lot to do about nothing. Just men resolving their differences, you know? <laughs> and that was that was very mature of Jake Skull to just go ahead and swing the bat there and, and make things right. Correct. This one fouled away off the mid of Leroy, who's frustrated with himself. And now that Skull has fouled another ball off, he can take all the time he wants in between pitches. His Nick has retired all seven party animals he's faced. It's a great take right there. Change up below the knees, count two and two. Yeah, one of the better pitches we've seen from Nisnik, and so that really speaks to Jake Skull's discipline at the plate as Manny spoils another one from Nisnik off speed at 79 miles an hour, according to Trackman. Fastball right around 90, change up right around 78 to 79, curveball right around 68 to 70. Three pitch mix, now 10 miles per hour separating all three of them. A great battle here between Skull and Niz Nasty. Nisnik, a former O'Fallon Hoop Collegiate Summer Ball. One of the favorite teams of legendary Bananas fan Kevin Riley. Another man out of the St. Louis area. The battle continues. Now the count runs full. Yeah, nine pitches so far between Noah Nisnik and Jake Skull. So this will be the first plate appearance to reach double digits. And how about that? Nisnik pulls the string. Skull frustrated at himself. And it is another punch out for Noah Nisnik, his fourth tonight. Retired all eight party animals, went with the 3-2 circle changeup in on the hands. You get another look behind the plate. Late break on it. Skull furious with himself that he came up empty. 
And just with everything that you're seeing from Noah Nisnik, it makes complete sense why Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron in spring training were talking about how excited they were to add this arm to the bullpen. I mean, again, they only had one lefty to enter 2023 with 76-year-old Bill Lee. And now they get to turn to guys like Noah Nisnik and Zach Phillips. And Ryan Kellogg wants... The visa situation is cleared up. That'll be an enormous addition to the Bananas bullpen and starting rotation if that's where they choose to throw the six foot seven southpaw. And what's beautiful about Kellogg, just touching on him for a second, kind of the perfect swing man. You can throw him in the rotation. You can also have him pitch multiple innings in relief. <laughs> Ryan Cox ranges out. We've got three guys converging, but it is Cox who winds up with the ball in the mitt there and the bananas continue to hold the party animal scoreless with Noah Nisnik out there on the mound. Nine up, nine down across his three innings of relief. So far, Bananas' offense has not been able to capitalize. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth, let's get it down to Christian Dearman with some fans of the game. Mr. Electric, what you got? Woo! What's going on, Banana Maniacs and Party Animal Nation alike? It is the one-minute interview with Christian Mr. Electric Dearman here. I got Mackenzie, and it's a very special day because it's her birthday. Mackenzie, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. Yeah, you're not feeling electric? <laughs> a little bit? No. So what's been your favorite part of Banana Land so far? Uh, I like the dancing. Dancing? All right, let's see. What's your best dance move then? I can't really dance. What? We could all dance. Let's do it. How about the sprinkler? Oh, okay. Come on. Mackenzie's going to join us. Watch this. Ready? Wow. Now those are some great moves, Mackenzie. Happy birthday from me and Banana Nation alike. Hope you keep going, Bananas. And let's get a win tonight, people. Woo! Thank you, Mackenzie. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Electric. Nice indeed, Christian Dearman. Great to have the man in his sixth campaign as a nanner third as a pro three collegiately before that joining us on the broadcast side of things how about that piece of hitting ryan cox two for two he wee willie killered him hit him where they ain't and it looked by the swing there from ryan cox that that was exactly what he was planning on doing just waited back and it was this kind of drag bunt-esque swing was still going all the way around there able to really beat the ship there from the party animals against him and i'm i'm honestly just baffled that they were shifting him in the first place yeah coxie can pretty much put the ball wherever he wants not just a magician with the glove but the bat as well as dearman sprints through your screen here back to join his guys malachi mitchell pinch running for cox for the second time tonight DR also two for two. Single and a triple, and he's ahead 3-0. and oh. Sean Fluke looking to stay scoreless in his sixth inning on the mound. And you may see Malachi take off with the count 3-0. and oh. And how about this? Vincent Chapman will call that one. It looks like a touch outside and flashes off to the races. But third base coach Ray Ortega will hold Malachi at third DR. Opts to stay at just first base. And it's the Bananas electing to go to a pinch hitter. It's Brandon Crosby coming out of the ball game. And Michael, Vitamin Deeb, stepping up to the plate. Michael Deeb did not get in on the game this past Friday, which broke a 101 games played streak he had, dating back to the One City World Tour. The longest of its kind in banana ball history. His streak up to two games here. Going back to last Saturday, and as DR steals second, Deeb ahead 2-0. and And even though Michael Deeb doesn't draw the start in this game either, if he's able to come through and get the walk off for the Bananas, he's going to be pretty happy as this one is skied out to left field. Thomas Camps under it, but Malachi Mitchell too fast for that throw to nab him. The Bananas get their first walk off 
and here is the double dutch celebration malachi stepping in and he nails it fellas fired up deeb the 2022 tour leader in walk-offs with five Grabs his first here in 2024. Let's look at that one again. Malachi easily beats the rap. And the chaos ensues. Jump rope o'clock. As we honor all the military members here in the Peoria Sports Complex, both past present and future for that matter. Uh, welcome inside the booth. Josh Tolevsky, Biko Scala, thank you so much for spending your Thursday night with us here in virtual banana land. For spending the evening with us, we now give you a shot at a free pair of shoes, courtesy of our dear pals over at Zappos. Josh, drum roll please. <laughs> yeah, Rooney. The buzzword is pleasant. Pleasant. Delightful. Yeah, it's a nice way to kick off I our mean, weekend. We had a pleasant Valentine's Day yesterday. And uh, I believe pleasant uh, after Mount Pleasant as well. Okay. Terrific. I'm guessing that's somewhere near us here, Mount Pleasant. You know, I'm no geographical expert, so... You know, we'll see if it winds up in possibly okay. a PowerPoint of sorts. You Terrific. Know, I, don't, I don't like to tip my hand too much. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. That's intriguing. Uh, so... To enter the giveaway, hit the link in the description in the video or in the comment section and fill out all of your contact information where it says buzzword, enter pleasant. You'll have a chance to do that throughout this top and then the bottom of the seventh inning. In which Noah Nisnik is now out for his fourth inning of relief. He's got five, six, and seven here. Thomas Delano and Acuff do to swing it. As that big bender just misses. Niz yeah. has retired all nine party animals he's faced, which started with Delano in the top of the fourth. Tanner, the only man in the lineup that has not faced Noah so far tonight. Mr. Thomas, ahead three and one. Round out and a line out so far tonight. Big cut and a foul away. Noah Nisnik at 51 pitches here for the Bananas. And really, you don't think that he is too gassed out there. This is a guy who spent most of his college career pitching in the rotation. So, you know, Bananas have felt very comfortable in stretching him out for now a fourth inning of work in this ballgame. Another 3-2. This one laced to left center. Rack coming in, sliding with the catch. And that is 10 straight retired. Nisnik has handled each of the party animals in order and now will start with his second time through their order. Delano started this run of 10 in a row, retired with a ground out to first. He was only at bat against Cowboy Kyle. He was struck out looking. And that was a sensational slide from Rack. The first step was what really mattered right there as he was able to get a great jump and come and make come up with that catch. Josh mentioned Nisnik, primarily a starter in his collegiate career when he was a Red Hawk. This one chopped to third. Howell drops it, loses the ball, and it's going to be an E5. So there's the first base runner that Nisnik has allowed, although Party Animal is still hitless against him, and now Jordan Hussein will pinch run for the second time tonight. And just kind of looks like that could have been due to some miscommunication. You saw Cox closing in on Gabe Howell as he was trying to make that play. And how about that quick pickoff move from Noah Nisvik trying to nab Hussein as soon as he comes in as the pinch runner. And we should also talk about the defensive replacement for the Bananas after Michael D pinch hit. It's now Eric Jones Jr. who has come into this ball game instead of playing the EH position. Jones now comes to first. As the extra hitter, he can be inserted into the field without penalty. That one blasted deep out to left center. DR runs it down. 
And Hussein will have to retreat back to first. Meadows showing his incredible speed. He covers a whole lot of ground out there in center field. about the night for Noah Nisnik. Three and two-third innings of relief. Does not allow a run. If Hussein scores from first, it will be unearned. And now you look at the numbers from a tour ago for the 10-foot nine man out of the pen. Dakota Stilts all Britain, the pride of Ellaville, Georgia. Ridiculously good numbers from Noah Nisnik tonight. And we saw great numbers from Dakota Stilts all Britain for most of last season, kind of slipped in the month of September, but overall, he was great. He earned eight points and only lost two, and had 39 pitching appearances for the Bananas as well. Jordan! Josh Porter Jordan. will get his first chance to hit against the gargantuan reliever for the Bananas. A deep fly out and a K so far tonight. Taj can hit righty, even though he is a switch hitter. And a big cut and a miss. That looked like a changeup from Stilts. It's a pretty interesting decision from Porter to stay right-handed, but he does feel more comfortable as a right-handed batter, of course. That's the natural hitting position for him. And how about this? Dakota Stilts up written unintentionally throwing behind the back of Josh Porter there. I don't know how that missed his thunderous thighs as this one in on the hands. Cox makes the call and the catch. It still gets the job done. Four straight scoreless innings of relief. The lion's share done by Miznik. All Britain puts the cherry on top. And the Nanners just need one run in the bottom of the seventh to tie this game. Let's get it down to Jesse Cole. As we are thrilled to be joined by our fearless leader here. Jesse, there have been 15 new additions between the party animals and the bananas so far on this tour. And tonight, you saw an immaculate performance by Noah Nisnik. It's unbelievable. You think about both Noahs. You got Noah Fisher on a skateboard driving a ball into the outfield. Then you got Noah Nisnik. And boy, he works fast. He's doing tricks. He's everything you look for in a banana ball pitcher. And that's what's happening. You're in players from all over the country that want to be a part of this. And we're just so grateful that they're joining us and adding to the level of banana ball. Jesse, speaking of the level of banana ball last season, 12 trick plays through the first three games of the tour. This year, both teams combined for 43. What has made the difference in the uptick in trick plays from last year to now? Well, it's pretty impressive. You know, that was the focus all spring training, and every day they're working on what they call the daily vitamins, their fundamentals, their dribbling behind the back. We believe that's how you take this game to the next level, and, uh, boy, they're putting it, uh, they're showing some things people have never seen before. We're about to go to double digits again. You know, it's really, really impressive. Jesse, 12 straight wins for the party animals dating back to last year, but the Nanners just down a point. How's this one ending? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this one is coming down to the last inning. Golden batter. It's going to be unbelievable. Mark my word on it, Biko. I can't argue with that. Jesse Cole, thank you so much. Love you, Biko. And well, you, Josh. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Jesse. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Cole. Fouled back towards the oh! broadcast booth. Oh! Couple, couple windows over. Or else we could have had a chance it's at... It's back-to-back games I know. that have come so close. So close, yet so far away. Drew Gillespie, the new man on the mound. He comes in for the heart of this Nanners order. Three, four, and five as he gets Dan chasing above the zone. Obers one for two tonight. Fouls this one right side. Swan going towards the line. Will have room and makes the catch. Oh, what a juggling act. Comes away with it in his bare hand. That's a Heckman adjustment from the Jacksonville kid. Dan was unable to get a hit against Drew Gillespie in his 2024 debut. And here Gillespie continues to just confound Dan Oberst at the plate. Dan is now 1 for 15, a lifetime against Gillespie. 
And how about this, EJ? First pitch swinging comebacker to Drew Gillespie, and that's an under the legs trick play for the riding. Two quick outs for Drew out of the pen. As you get a quick look at the Jacob Spades, and there it is. Right out of Jackson Olsen's playbook, a bare hand by Swan on the other end. And Gabe Howell now ahead 1-0. Gillespie will bring Acuff, Baber, and Hampton in. In fact, his outfielders in the corners, Thomas and Skull, going to join in on this one too. A lot of derriere shaking, and then a sidearm pitch gets a foul ball. That makes Drew Gillespie now two for two on his strikes when throwing a 6-2-2, or in this case, a 7-2-2. Now he's doing the MC hammer on the pitcher's mound before delivering the pitch to Gabe Howell. And that one, lined and just foul, according to our third base umpire. Lalo Mendoza over there. Bananas don't have their challenge, neither do the fans. Bananas were incorrect, the fans were correct. Now have had two calls overturned in four games this year. Off to a much stronger percentage than a year ago. Good to see Drake Toll, our Party Animals correspondent, chopping it up in the chat currently with his best friend, the mother of Sean Fluke. One, two. Back up the middle, Gabe Howell's got a base knock. One for two on the night. A sprint his last time, so he's aboard for a second time. Patiently fouled off some pitches against Drew Gillespie, and there the sixth pitch of that at bat. Left across the plate, Howell did not miss it, driving it up the middle. And again, Rack has a chance for a walk-off to tie this ball game at two points apiece for the Bananas. Inning winning run aboard, Howell runs very well. Guy who is 15 for 15 in stolen base attempts. In 2020 with the Nanners, this one blasted, but Jake Skull able to backpedal and grab it. Well struck by Cruz. Trackman had it at 102 miles per hour off the bat of the former Washington Nationals minor leaguer. But it will be grabbed. That marks the end of the seventh, the end of our Zappos shoe giveaway. And we'll get it down to Jesse Cole to clean the dish. Home plate. One or two contestants come out here. We've got Derek and Erica. You guys have been married seven years. So my question to you, at home, who cleans the dishes? This guy. This guy? This girl, okay. So now we're gonna do it a little differently here. We're gonna do a clean the dish contest, but this is the dish. We're gonna see who cleans it best, banana style. Derek, you may not clean them at home, but let's see what you got, here we go. Fans, you'll be the judge. Let's get some music, Shark. Oh, Derek, you better get into it more than that, Derek. I can tell you don't clean the dishes at home at all. All right. This would not get anything accomplished at home at all. There would be zero dishes cleaned at home. All right, Derek, that's enough. That's enough. All right. Can't unwatch that. Now, Erica, your turn. Here we go. Shark music. What is this? This is, uh, this. Oh. All right, this, yep. Again, all right, no. All right, again, zero dishes get cleaned at this house. Fans, was the winner, was it Derek? Let's hear it for Derek. Or was it Erica? All right, our winner of Clean the Dish is Erica. Oh, jeez. Now that home plate is officially clean. We head to the eighth inning. Less than a half hour left on our two-hour timer. And for the third time tonight, 
Jason Swan will lead off an inning. Let off the third with a single, and off the fifth with a strikeout looking. And he's got a 1-1 count on him as Zach Phillips takes over for Stilts on the mound. They cut and a foul away, count even at two and two. And already you're seeing Zach Phillips just rapid firing pitches to the plate. And this is a guy who wants not only to throw the fastest inning in banana ball history, but to lead the tour in average MPI at the end of this season. He had a four minute and 21 second average MPI in his season debut across four innings. But it was really that final inning, a seven minute, a seven minute, 42 second inning that kind of upped the average as his first three innings, three minutes and 25 seconds, then three minutes and 29 seconds, and then a two minute and 50 second inning. I mean, this guy is a classic three and a half minutes and under guy on the regular. Dustin Bieber down to a knee, chugs a beer, and is ready to swing it against the former Kansas City Royals minor leaguer. Phillips spent four years in the organization after KC grabbed him in the 27th round in 2019. That one top of the zone. Aver's not so sure of it. Phillips, 90 to 92 miles an hour tonight so far with his fastball according to Trackman. That one roped through the six hole. Babe's on base for the second time tonight. He's now one for two. And with Dustin Baber reaching, Jordan Hussein is going to come in as the designated runner and pinch run for Baber for the second time tonight. Reese Hampton fouls this one right side. EJ with a long run, can't get there. Bermuda Triangle between Jones, Alexiades, and Olsen. With such a tough read for EJ as he was ranging out in the foul territory, thought that was going to go more towards the, the kind of warning track dirt there by the first base stands, and instead the ball kind of faded back towards the grass there, and that's a big reason why EJ wasn't able to come up with the catch. Reese one for three, a single sandwiched in between two ground outs to the grade eight at second base. This one spoiled. Curveball fouled away. Phillips four seam, two seam, and cut fastball, as well as the curveball you just saw, and a changeup to round out the five pitch arsenal. This one fouled away again. Hampton out of the Peoria Sports Complex, so uncatchable by the fans. And Reese is playing a really dangerous game with all of these foul balls. You can only hit so many out to the fans before you're finally gonna get burned. Now Phillips goes with the high fastball. Reese will spit on it, and Bill thought about checking Hussein back at first base. That one inside corner, strike three. Philly's second K of the inning. Reese Hampton arguing the fact, but Trackman liked it, said it got just the edge of the plate there. And Trackman's not the only one who liked the pitch. Vincent Chapman's kind of been calling that inside spot on right-handed batters all night tonight, so good decision by Bill Leroy to set up there and Phillips to nail that spot. That one on the outside corner. 90 on the gun. Dalton Cornett with the 1-1 count as he does not bite on the curveball right around that same spot. One for two with the sack fly tonight is DC3. Jordan Hussein told us he'd have two runs and two stolen bases tonight. So far, one run scored. No bag swiped. One fouled away and not caught by the fans. Well, it's really hard for Hussein to come up with a stolen base, especially with the lefty and Phillips there on the mound. Of course, lefties have a much easier pickoff move, and, and Phillips has shown it off a time or two in his banana ball career. Has a long check there on Hussein, then delivers the pitch. Cox is nearly able to be in the perfect position to nail the tag on Hussein. But unfortunately, that ball squirted out of the glove. Well, there's 
one of the two steals we've been promised by Jordan. Great jump, it is very tough to steal on Philly. And Leroy's got a great arm, now a pickoff attempt. Hussein's out! Phillips got him! He flips off the field. Party animals do have a challenge, we'll see if they use it. But so far it looks like they are going to live with the call made by Lalo Mendoza. Yeah, just in the way that Mike Babasis is going out and talking to Jordan Hussein, it's a little bit of a, hey, you've got to be more careful here. We had the chance to draw the ball for a sprint there and have you come around and score. Let's be a little more intelligent with our decisions there. And so that is a big out for Zach Phillips. And, well, we usually talk about his good pickoffs at first base. Here, he's able to get it at second. Boy, and I think this late in the game, a play that close, easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, especially after we watch the slow-mo replay. But Vivasis, I think, should have challenged that. On the replay, it looked like Hussein got the hand in. Cox's tag hit the dirt. Jordan got a hand in, and then the glove hit his chest. But we turn the Peoria Sports Complex yellow. 290th straight sold out Bananas game. Over 11,000 fans here in the 31 year old ballpark. Boy is it a beauty, spring training home in the Seattle Mariners and San Diego Padres. It's been a phenomenal venue as someone who was not able to actually make it out to the Arizona trip in 2023. This place has been outstanding and it is so cool to see all the fans just sitting out on the berms in right and left center, waving their phone flashlights to yellow right now. Thank you, everybody. Still with us here on Thursday night in Banana Land. The clock at 8.39 p.m. Mountain Time. Of course, all of our friends on the East Coast means it's 10.39, which means it's time for the pride of Butler, Pennsylvania. Alex Ziggy Ziegler to get his first at bat of 2024. Look what he did across last year's tour, although a good amount of those at-bats were with his 39-pounder. That one blasted deep to left. Alex Ziegler has left the building. No. What's the call? Lalo Mendoza has not signaled if it was a home run or not. Neither has Bryson Wheeler. For now, it's a two-bagger for Ziggy. Boy, did he get all of that. And the Bananas do not have their challenge, so they can't look at this under a review. We can, though. It won't affect what happened on the field. Tough to tell there. I think it won't hop the wall. It though. looked like it stayed in the park to me. It did. Holy moly. Ziggy, warning track power. Will be content with a double on the first pitch he sees in 2024. Pitch run for by Malachi Mitchell. That was only the third time Alex Ziegler has ever faced Drew Gillespie in his banana ball career. That's his first hit, and I think from now on, Drew Gillespie's going to show Ziggy a lot more respect at the plate. How about pinch hitting for the Pioneer League MVP from a summer ago? And Ziggy gets the job done. This one driven out by Jackson Olsen over the head of Reese Hampton. Flash can score easily. Jackson's second walk off of the tour, and this game's knotted at two points apiece. What a crazy inning! Alex Ziegler, without the flaming bat, without the big bat, ropes one out to left field, gets in the scoring position, and just two pitches later, Jackson Olsen comes through his second walk off here in 2024, and we've got a two point game going into the final inning. And that is Jackson Olsen's first hit of the tour. Here's the young professor. Upon the scoreboard, heading into the top of the ninth inning, it is all evened up. A brand new ball game, two points to two points. 
Here is the thing about the ninth inning in the game of banana ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means this is the time for the bananas to hold off the party animals and score just one run to win the whole thing. Peoria, are you ready for it? Then ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final inning! Let's meet our ring dudes. What a ball game we've party. got. The second ever played here in Peoria, Arizona. The third ever played in the Valley of the Sun. As we had one in Scottsdale a year ago. And now Danny Hosley, the best pitcher from a year ago, will come out and try and hold serve to give the Nanners a chance to walk this off with just one run in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, and the reason you don't see Danny Hosley in the lineup tonight for the Bananas is because they knew they wanted to bring him in the ninth inning where every run counts for a point. And Hosley, so valuable last season in his first appearance in 2024. Haas pitched across two innings, gave up three hits and an earned run, had a sprint and a strikeout. And for Hosley, a four minute and 31 second average MPI. And he's usually a guy who will have higher MPIs than a lot of other guys, but mainly it's because he racks up so many strikeouts on the mound, struck out 37% of all the batters he faced in 2023. It's gaudy, those are gaudy numbers. Video game numbers. Tough part of the Party Animals lineup, hitters two through four, DC three, Skull, and then Fisher. That one misses down and out. By the way, that Jackson Olsen walk-off double to win the eighth. Trackman had it at 102 miles an hour off the bat. Jackson has driven in two runs so far this year. They both won innings. And he is the only man with multiple walk-ups. Check that. Everybody's walking up to the plate. He's the only man with multiple walk-offs here in three-plus games of banana ball. Check swing. Cornette able to hold up. So 2-1 coming from Hosley. That fastball at 91 according to Trackman. And now the count two and two. Hosley with that low 90s four seam fastball. A devastating Vulcan changeup, his best pitch, and then a 12-6 curveball. That is nothing to laugh at either. That one, diving stop EJ to his feet to Hosley. Huge play by the defensive replacement, Eric Jones Jr. Huge play for Eric Jones Jr. He is hyped and all of his teammates come and circle around and giving him some, ta some taps on that hat. I mean, this is the guy who started the game as the EH for the Bananas and now just three innings into playing first base comes up with might be the play of the game tonight. You can see the emotion right there. Former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer, this is the Mariners spring training home. EJ has spent a decent amount of time here in the Peoria Sports Complex from his time in the Mariners organization as a player and then as a bullpen catcher in the summer of 2022. Jake Skoll ahead, three balls and no strikes. 0 for three tonight. Scored the run that won the first inning. Big cut and a miss, 3-1, and Hosley with a 90 mile an hour heater that bit down below the knees. Big payoff coming. Called strike three, oh my goodness. Jake Skoll has a good reason to be incensed here. <laughs> Hosley celebrating. That thing was around his shoelaces. That's a tough one. That is now five strikeouts looking for the party animals tonight. They haven't been the biggest fans of Vincent Chapman's zone, and it really shows as this team, again, does not strike out many times, and when they do, it's usually swinging. I think in general, Vincent has been good tonight, but Jake Skoll and Jason Swan have major bones to pick with him, legitimate ones. As we said earlier, it is a very tough job umpiring behind the dish. This one nubbed to the right side. The cue ball grabbed by Hosley. He'll take it to first himself. One, two, three frame. Here's the young professor. 
finally manages to hold off the boys in pink. Ladies and gentlemen of Peoria, Arizona, the Bananas need just one run to win this game. Do you want to see it? Then get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because this is it! Hosley does what he does. Three up and three down. Strikeout mixed in, whether it was deserved or not. And now it's going to be 9, 10, and 1 for the Bananas. As the folks here in the Silicon Desert, rowdy for some free merchandise being sent in their general direction. Dylan Porter will be the new man on the mound to face Bill Leroy, Ryan Cox, and then at the top of the lineup, if we get there, DR Meadows. Dylan Porter was the only man to make multiple appearances in the opening series in Tampa through two innings and gave up three hits and five runs, but none of them were earned for Dylan Porter. Had some troubles defensively behind him, and well, Porter allowed two sprints but didn't get a strikeout, but he has been four for four in his save opportunities for the party animals. Head coach Mike Favasis loves him as this team's closer, and this is the guy that they can think, that they believe can get them to showdowns tonight against the Bananas. And we'll see with Leroy and Cox at the bottom of this order if the Bananas use their golden batter. It sounds like they will. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bananas are going to the golden batter, batting in the place of Bill Leroy. Please welcome Dan Ober! It's Dan's third trip up to the plate as a golden batter, he's seen two pitches and made two outs. We'll see if Dan has a little bit of a more patient approach in his third golden batter appearance of the tour. He will take ball one, and Dan, usually an aggressive hitter who likes to hack, but last season against Dylan Porter, batted 4-12 against the right-hander, so the Bananas believe that he can get on to start this inning as this one is grounded to short. Chase Acuff goes between the legs, and Jason Swan, I don't think, held on to the ball at first base, so Overs will reach on an E3. Wow, that's a surprising one. I had already started writing 6-3 TPO. And the party animals have saved their challenge and will now deploy it. So we will take a look at this in the replay. Grayson Wheeler has had one play overturned tonight already. Zach Frangelo and Vincent Chapman Get the Riedel headsets on, and let's get a gander. Another look. Yeah, call stands. I, I agree. The, the ball comes out of the glove. Yeah, call stands. A very rare error there from Jason Swan, who is normally very sure-handed at first base. Basically was the Ben Zobris for Georgia Southern across his five years there, played all over the place. Now the game's winning run aboard. Dan Oberst, as good a base runner as you can find, not just in Banana Land, anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. And again, he's been in Tyler Gillum's system for so long that he is very familiar with the green light special. You see him dancing over there at first base for the Bananas. And Ryan Cox, who's got two hits tonight for the Nanners, is ahead in the count, 2-0 against Porter. A dribbler up the middle and a well-placed dribbler down the third baseline. Noah Fisher now is occupying that spot. And a 3-0 count on Cox. Dan takes off, it's ball four. 
Party Animal's got to be quick with their sprint defense, or this is it. Moberst gets a stop sign. Excellent job by the Animals to recover. Dan was off on the pitch, but with no outs and the top of the order coming up, no chances were needed to be taken there. DR Meadows, two for two with the sprint tonight. This is a guy you feel very comfortable putting the game in his hands. DR Meadows batted 371 against Dylan Porter in the 2023 World Tour. And the Bananas decided to play it safe there. They didn't want to run into an out at home plate there with no outs. Conservative move, keeping Dan Oberst just 90 feet away from scoring. Party Animals will try and counter that by shifting the entire infield in on that grass and taking off on the very first pitch from Porter. It's Ryan Cox now reaching second base. Fouled straight back. The full capacity crowd bouncing here in Peoria. Our fourth game of the season. Here on our second stop, Nanners looking for their first win. That one up the middle, D.R. Meadows does it. He's your hero, Ober scores. Nanners finally have a win. The win streak for the Party Animals ends at 12. The win streak, no more for the Party Animals. D.R. Meadows propels the Bananas to their first win of 2024 with the walk-off single. What a game. Boy, did they need that. They're now one in three on this young season. And we finally get to see how they will celebrate victories here in 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the Banana Squad. Infielder Dalton Malden and entertainer Maceo Malachi Mitchell and Alex Ziegler. Coming down next, Cowboy Kyle, our starting pitcher, and myself, Bill LaRoy. Up next, our pitching staff, Ethan Scutia. Jared Donaldson, Ryan Kellogg, Christian Dearman, DJ the Invader, Austin Krzminski, Andy Archer, Noah Nisnik, and Zachary Phillips. Coming down next, our infielders. <laughs> our utility guys, Danny Hosley and Eric Jones. Next we have our infielders, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, Gabe Owl, Brandon Crosby, Danny Over, and Rack. Now for the boys in the outfield, DR Meadows walking off the game, Noah Bridges, Reese Alexiades, and Michael D. Up next, we have our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron, Ray Ortega, and Coach Tyler Gilla. Last, but certainly not least, the tallest man in sports, pitching tonight, Dakota Stilts Albritton.
meet you guys, to thank you. Seriously, one of the most electric, energized crowd we've ever had. We love you guys. We'll see you outside. So as the full capacity crowd makes their way out to the party plaza, Stilts and Company celebrating their first victory. And as Sean Fluke said earlier, in tonight's broadcast, about 170 days, 170 days. Get another look at the walk-off from DR Meadows. Over scoring and pure jubilation on the faces of a team that was starved for a W. Yeah, that is an absolute fact, and boy, it feels like that monkey is finally off of the bananas' backs. You just see how excited they were, and hopefully it's good momentum for them as they now try to stay We'll try to pull off a sweep here in Peoria and even up the tour at three games apiece. That's right. They can win Peoria with a victory tomorrow night. They can sweep it, of course, if they follow that up with another win on Saturday. All three games here in Peoria are night games. And one more treat before we shut this thing down tonight. We have Danny Hosley joining us from down on the field. His second pitching appearance of the season and boy, is it an important one. A one, two, three, top of the ninth with a strikeout. Haas, if you've got us down there, how good does it feel to finally have a win? Good for the boys to come together in Peoria and get our first one here. Osley, you get to come in the ninth inning, a situation you're very familiar with. Set the party animals, three up, three down, and a big thing that was really the bugaboo for you guys during the last series, seven ball four sprints allowed in the ninth innings of games. Tonight, no ball four sprints for you. Just how good was it to see really the entire bullpen, no one is Zach Phillips and yourself, just able to shut down the party animals the rest of this ball game. I mean, it was huge. Kyle set the table for us. Nisnik came in after that, shut him down. Phillips got the shutdown, and then to finish it off with a win tonight just felt great for the boys. I know, uh, like I said, it takes takes a big pressure off our back getting that first one, and um, you know we got a long tour ahead of us, and I think we're just ready to keep competing. So the twelve game losing streak is no longer is over. Oh, it I is think over. I lost. Oh, there, oh, we go. there we go. You're back. We're back. Uh, I just want to know what the vibes were like in the dugout tonight because the party animals were up two points to nothing three innings into the ball game and and when you're having such a trouble defeating this you, team oh I'm coming in I'm coming out what how did you guys stay composed tonight is my long-winded question uh I mean to be honest with you man top to bottom we just had a really good showing from the squad man I mean talk about guys coming off the bench Ziggy leading off with a double and that uh and I mean just an absolute shot from yeah. the kid in the left field Top to bottom, guys coming off the bench, just doing their job. Our starters doing a great job holding it down. Doc just absolutely tearing it up at the uh, at the top of the order right now. I don't know what he's hitting. Josh, you got me on the numbers there. Uh, Ziggy? Yeah, I, yeah, guy's raking right now. Ziggy is one for one, so he's batting 1,000 on the tour. Oh, yeah, Ziggy raking, Doc <laughs> raking. I mean, the boys, the boys are ready to go. We're ready for Peoria, ready for the rest of the tour. Doc, nine for 15. I think that's like 667 is. with my quick uh, math oh, up here. I think I lost you boys up there. Danny Hosley, thank you so much. Have fun out on the plaza. Thank you, boys.